chat. You know what it means. Hi Sandy, hi Rosie, hi April, hi Linda, hi guys. I'm with here with Sherm who's being mean today. Me, 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 me. Say hi, Sherm. Um, Say hi. hi. Say it like you're excited to be here. Uh, that's what I like. That's my excitement voice. I thought I heard the camera beep. Sorry I did not get the reading up yesterday. I was really sick and I kind of like slept the whole day away pretty much. It's like a blur to me. I basically can't even remember yesterday. But um, we're going to make two separate videos unless the first one is rel relatively short. And then we'll combine both videos together like we did before. But we'll see. No, I'll make a separate one. Regardless, I'm only going to do the prayer requests and stuff once. So that way, if this one is too long, I'm still just going to go ahead and do the prayer requests in the second video. Unless we combine them together. But we'll just have to see about the time. So let's go ahead and get started here. With yesterday's reading, if you'd like to follow along, I'm sure you're going to follow along today. I don't know. Uh -huh. We'll be reading in the New International Version. And we're going to be reading Romans, chapter 7. Verses 1 through 13. And our psalm is Psalm 17. And our Proverbs is Proverbs chapter 19, verses 22 and 23. So let's go ahead and begin. Kick Dixie right in the face with your shoe. <laughs> Released from the law, bound to Christ. Do you not know, brothers and sisters, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law has authority over someone only as long as that person lives? For example, by law, a married woman is bound to her husband as long as he is alive. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law that binds her to him. So then if she has sexual relations with another man while her husband is still alive, she is called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is released from that law and is not an adulteress if she marries another man. So, my brothers and sisters, you also died to the law through the body of Christ, that you might belong to another to him who was raised from the dead, in order that he might bear fruit for God. For when we were in the realm of the flesh, the sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in us, so that we bore fruit to death. But now, by dying to that once bound us, we have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the spirit and not in the old way of the written code. What shall we say then? Is it lawful? Is it law? Is the law sinful? Certainly not. Nevertheless, I would not have known what sin had it not been for the law, for I would not have known that coveting really was if the law had not said you shall covet. 
But sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, produced in me every kind of coveting. For apart from the law, sin was dead. Once I was alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin sprang to life and I died. I found that the very commandment that was intended to bring life actually brought death. For sinning, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, deceived me and through the commandment put me to death. So then the law is holy and the commandment is holy, righteous and good. Did that which is good then become death to me? By no means. Nevertheless, in order that sin might be recognized as sin, it used what is good to bring about my death, so that through the commandment, sin might become utterly sinful. And that's where we're stopping with Romans. That was Romans chapter 7, verses 1 through 13. And our psalm today is another beautiful psalm of David. It is a prayer of David, Psalm 17. It is a little bit of a longer psalm, not one of the longest by far, but longer than it has been these few days. Hear me, Lord. My plea is just. Listen to my cry. Hear my prayer. It does not rise from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from you. May your eyes see what is right. Though you probe my heart, though you examine me at night and test me, you will find that I have planned no evil. My mouth has not transgressed. Though people tried to bribe me, I have kept myself from the ways of the violent. Through what your lips have commanded, my steps have held to your paths. My feet have not stumbled. I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love, you who save by your right hand, those who take refuge in you from their foes. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who are out to destroy me, from the mortal enemies who surround me. They close up their palace hearts, and their mouths speak with arrogance. They have trapped me down. They now surround me with eyes alert to throw me to the ground. They are like a lion hungry for prey, like a fierce lion crouching in cover. Rise up, Lord, confront them, bring them down. With your sword, rescue me from the wicked. By your hand, save me from such people, Lord. For those of this world whose reward is in this life, may what you have stored up for the wicked fill their bellies. May their children gorge themselves on it, and may there be leftovers for their little ones. As for me, I will be vindicated and will see your face. When I awake, I will be satisfied with seeing your likeness. And that was Psalm 17, a prayer of David. And our Proverbs for yesterday is Proverbs chapter 19, verses 22 and 23. What a person desires is unfailing love. Better to be poor than a liar. The fear of the Lord leads to life then one rests content, untouchable by trouble. The fear of the Lord leads to life, then one rests content, untouched by trouble. All right, guys, that was yesterday's Bible reading. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. And again, I am so sorry it is late. Sure, what's the time? 9.36. Okay, guys, we've got time to do both. So, let's continue to today's Bible reading. And that will be Romans chapter 7, verses 14 through chapter 8, verse 8. 
and our psalm is Psalm 18, verses 1 through 15. And our Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 19, Verses 24 and 25. Are you set? And that will be in the New International Version. So let's begin, guys, with Romans. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate to do, but what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me, for I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is, in my sinful nature, for I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do good, I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. Of my mind, I am making me a prisoner of the law of sin, at work within me. What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. And that was Romans chapter 7, verse 14, through chapter 8, verse 8. And our psalm today is Psalm 18, verses 1 through 15. For the director of music of David, the servant of the Lord, he sang to the Lord the words of this psalm, when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his men and enemies and from the hand of Saul, he said, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I have been saved from my enemies. The cords of death entangled me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. 
the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came from him into his ears. The earth trembled and quaked, and the foundation of the mountains shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils. Consuming fire came from his mouth. Burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. Dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him the dark rain clouds of the sky. Out of the brightness of his presence, clouds advanced with hailstones and bolts of lightning. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot his arrows and scattered the enemy. With great bolts of lightning, he routed them. The valleys of the sea were exposed and the foundations of the earth laid bare at your rebo, Lord at the blast of your breath from your nostrils. And that was Psalm 18, verses 1 through 15. For the director of music of David, the servant of the Lord, he sang to the Lord the words of this song when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And our Proverbs for today is Proverbs chapter 19. Verses 24 and 25. A sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He will not even bring it back to his mouth. Flog a mocker and the simple will learn prudence. Revoke the discerning and they will gain knowledge. All right, guys, that was our Bible reading for yesterday and today. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys are having a blessed day. Let's get out our rare books. How are we doing on time? 17. We do got one new prayer request today. Let's keep Sandy in our prayers. Sandy's been having a harder time here at work here lately. She's got a lot of stuff going on and new people coming in, which is always a big change, you know. So please keep Sandy in your prayers. She really needs them, but she is off work tonight. Please keep April and Linda Thacker in your prayers. April's lungs are really bad at this point. Um, they're bad anyways, but, you know, she's having really tr a lot of trouble with her lungs here. She's on antibiotics and everything right now, trying to get them back under control. Please keep Eric in your prayers and put him on your prayer list at church. He needs a kidney. Please be with Macy and keep her in your prayers. She has a brain tumor that we want to ask God to take away. So she needs to be on your prayer list at church. Kenny Wellman needs to be on your prayer list at church and he needs to be in your prayers. He needs a kidney as well. Please keep Sherman your prayers. He goes to the doctor Tuesday. Please keep Cindy Welsh in your prayers. She's got a lot going on right now and will be having more surgery next month. Please pray that they get it all this time. Please keep Rhonda Karshner in your prayers. You know, she's got a lot of health problems and might be having gallbladder trouble, but her feet and legs and ankles have been swelling up the last few days really, really huge and she stood be, should be staying off of them but she's too busy working and won't hardly ever sit down so please keep her in your prayers please keep christopher sir back in your prayers he's supposed to go back home tonight please keep abby and jimmy myers in your prayers there's a lot going on right there for both of them for different things and they both need a lot, a lot of prayer, Abby and Jimmy Myers. Please keep Matt Nichols in your prayers. He needs them. He's in prison. Please keep Shannon and her little son, Giovanni, in your prayers. Giovanni really needs God's healing touch. He's got an awful disease, an awful illness. He's just a little boy. 
Please keep Donald and Kathy Keller in your prayers for health reasons. Please keep Roy and Lori Mollett in your prayers for health reasons. Please keep Barb Post in your prayers for health reasons. Please keep Joe Osborne in your prayers. He needs to get back on the right track. He didn't stay on it very long, I guess. Please keep Debbie Lee in your prayers for health reasons and pray that she finds a good man in her life. Please pray for Tammy Ashworth for health reasons. Please pray for Josh and Bedelia and their unborn baby Braxton. Should we do any time now? Please pray for Randy Post, Jody Mahorder, and Ronnie Mahorder. And please pray for my cousin Jules friend Brenda, who is in the James Cancer Hospital right now with cancer on her liver. Please pray with her, or pray for her. She really needs prayers because you know you can't live without a liver and she's not doing very good. But God can take that away. So keep her in your prayers, please. So that was your prayers and um, prayer requests and we'll say a prayer and we'll be done for the day. Brother Jesus and Father, please watch over everyone on our prayer list. You know their needs more than we do, Father. Please be with them. Please be with everyone watching this video. Please let it have touched their hearts and let at least one person share your word with someone else, Brother Jesus and Father. I love you, Brother Jesus and Father, with all of my heart and soul. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Well, that was everything. I hope you guys have a blessed rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.